What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're dialing in how to fish and how to skip boat docks. I'm going to dive into the differences between certain kinds of docks, how I target them, and then ultimately what a lot of you have been asking about, how do I skip and how do I approach skipping these boat docks behind me? And let's jump into it right now. Let's go. We're here in Mexico. We are in the Dominican Republic. So I'm going to tell you a couple of different tips that have helped me over the years. Wow! Unbelievable! Jacob Wheeler makes history! All right, so the first thing I'm gonna dive into is different types of docks around the country. What you're gonna see, no matter where you're at, whether you're up north, south, east, west, does not matter, this is the deal. First off is pole docks. These are pole docks, they're docks that actually have poles that run down into the ground and they're stable. So that is a typical type of dock. The one thing about these docks a lot of times the fish don't just tend to suspend on them nearly as much. They actually have, it sort of sets up as like a, as a piece of cover because it ultimately goes to the bottom. You know, where other docks, like marine docks and floating docks, they tend to suspend more. These docks have, you know, these poles that run into them. So they're almost like, you know, standing timber, if you will. And now the big thing is shade and the fact that they, these, these poles are driven into the docks. Now, one thing that I'm always looking for, okay, is what type, what kind of pole are they on? Are they on the back post? Are they on the front post? Are they in the slip? Are they on the biggest shaded part of the dock? And you can see like with the way the sun's angled, I'll sort of back up. This side has the most sun, this side has the most shade. So a lot of times throughout the day, there will be times that this particular setup right here, those fish will be on this side of the dock. They might not even be on the dock, they might be three or four feet away from the dock right here on the shaded side. So you always have to think of shade. You have to think of cover. You have to think of what those fish are ultimately feeding on and forage, um, and then just go about it that way. So first off, pole box, let's go to the next one. All right, so next is a floating dock. This is a little bit bigger out than average floating dock, but these are the docks that they're gonna tend to suspend on. A lot of people call them floaters. If you hear the term floaters, that's when they're gonna suspend a little bit more. Now they will still get, you'll see the poles. There's, there is still poles holding these ones down, but there's only a couple. So a lot of times fishing these docks is, is, is really comes down to understanding what the forage is. Are they on bluegill? Are they on shad? And you see a lot of times that's what I'm really focusing in on the shad spawn. And you see a lot of guys do that is floating docks because the shad will actually suspend and they'll actually get on the top on the float and, and spawn on the sides of the float. That's why the bass get up really high in the water column and that's why it's such a good pattern. Now, there's one more dock we're gonna talk about and then we're gonna dive into the specifics of it all and then ultimately dive into how to skip a lure underneath the boat docks. All right, last but not least, marina docks. Marina docks are all around the country, but the good thing about a marina dock is this. It's, it's sort of a needle in a haystack. A lot of times there'll be one marina dock or even one slip in a full thing of marinas. Like literally, like I'm talking, I'm talking hundreds of slips and there'll be two slips the bass are living in. It's sort of, it, it, it's a cool deal because ultimately if you do find that one special slip, I've seen it. And sometimes you would think a lot of times it's like, okay, well it's isolated slip or it's a slip. There's normally a regularity. There's normally a reason like the furthest one in, the furthest one out, or something like that, or the one towards the end. But I have seen several times where for whatever reason, there's just one slip or it's an old boat or something that the majority of the bass live on. Now, the key with this whole thing, and I can dive into a lot of different, I can go this go a lot of different ways with this, but I wanted to sort of explain to you some, some of you that have not seen this or don't necessarily fish a lot of boat docks or don't get a chance to fish a lot of boat docks, sort of how all of these things set up. You know, on the isolated, you know, floating docks, those are not gonna normally harbor schools of bass. You know, a smaller bass, you know, a smaller dock might have one or two or maybe three or four bass. You could literally have hundreds of bass below a, a marina like this, but you're not always gonna be able to be able to catch those fish or even get to them. They could literally be so far up underneath there that they're just so stacked back on the, underneath there you can't even get to those fish. So that is something that I really enjoy fishing, but it takes a lot of time to find those fish. Now, the thing about this, one thing I will also mention about marina docks, just the dock itself definitely holds fish. And the shallow dock, the thing is you've got to think of one, a couple different things that fish can get around the boat docks. 
Um, there's, there's a lot of times that brush piles around boat docks. And those are places where those fish, and you can idle around or look around and, and find some, some of these brush piles that are around these boat docks. Those are pretty good high percentage areas because it's a regularity that's not the boat dock itself, um, but a place where those fish will get on, and that's something that I look for. Another thing that I look for um, are the posts that are set up on these places as well. Um, there's not really many posts on this particular marina dock, but a lot of times the posts themselves will hold the fish. It's the only thing that's really connecting the bottom. And last but not least, the cables, the cables of the actual dock extending out. A lot of times the fish will suspend on it and that can be a really good pattern, especially in clear water impoundments, like a table rock, um, you know, or, or like a, a bull shoal or something like those bodies of water, those highland reservoirs, tend to, tend to, that tends to play a little bit more than the clear water, or the stained water reservoirs. They don't tend to suspend nearly as much. Now, I'm gonna dive into what I do or how I sort of set up where I'm skipping these boat docks, how I do it, what my setup is, and everything. So I'm gonna throw the chest on real quick here. I'm gonna sort of dial that in, try to make a few casts. And this is the thing. Okay, the first thing that you need to know about skipping a bow dock is, see, you can hear sort of the wind blowing, is you need flat, calm conditions to first to learn. It, the, the more you have waves and wind to disturb the, the, the actual surface of the water, the more it comes down to the point where you're gonna have a harder time actually learning this, this, this cast and being able to be efficient with it. It's all about confidence. If you believe that you can do it, you can. It's gonna take practice and there's gonna be quite a few jigs that you beat up and maybe a few boats that you beat up in the process. So take your time and you'll learn as you go. And so we'll dive into a few more of these tips here. Let me throw this chesty on and we'll jump on it. All right, so this is the thing. There's a lot of different things that I, that I look at. You guys, you guys see me consistently. I do a little pitch skip. I'll do a row cast. Um, first thing you're gonna think about is the rod, okay? Um, I, I like to throw a 7.3. This is actually my heavy action rod. I would not recommend that for a beginner. This is not something that you wanna start to skip with first. You wanna go with something that has a faster tip, this rod has a little bit of a tip, but it's not gonna have a whole lot. So, you're because you, you gotta drive the hook home on a jig and stuff like that. So you're not gonna be as accurate with that. What I would recommend is like my seven foot medium heavy. This is the rod I would probably recommend first. It's seven foot medium heavy. It's gonna be shorter, so you're gonna be able to make those casts. You're gonna be able to roll cast a little bit. You're gonna be way more accurate, and it's gonna allow you to be able to roll cast those that, that cast and be able to reel it in there and potentially you know, get it to where those bass are living. Now, once you get better and better, you can go up to a medium heavy. And I still have, pro I'm gonna be honest with you, I still have problems with my, my heavy every once in a while or a heavy action rod with skipping. I don't like a super heavy action rod. You need a faster tip to be able to make, to load that rod up and be able to make and, and, and really get back up underneath these docks. So that's my first recommendation. The other thing, ooh, see, you gotta be careful. Watch out here. So the other thing that I'm gonna, I'm gonna recommend is a three to one gear ratio reel, no matter what it is. See, this, the reel that I, I throw the most is my, my signature series reel. Uh, you see the little blue, my blue, my blue logo. And this reel right here, for me, is the perfect reel because it's super free. And what I mean by this is it, when I make a cast or I pitch, it goes out of my hand, the, the actual line goes off the reel quickly. So that allows me to be able to make super quick pitches and be able to get into those places. The issue is, what's this gonna do? It's gonna make it easier to backlash. So you have to really adjust the reel according to, to how advanced you are and what all you know about skipping. Now, let me go back to this rod and reel, rod and reel right here. Okay, so I have eight three to one gear ratio reel. Now, one thing I'm gonna do first thing, if I'm if I'm first a big, if I'm just starting, I'm gonna start right here. This is the this is the braking system, okay? So I'm gonna go about halfway, okay? Halfway. There's probably you know say there's there's 15 or 18 little knobs that you can actually go around. I'm gonna go about halfway right there, and then I'm gonna check and see where that's at. Okay, it's it's dropping pretty fast still. So I'm gonna go to this tension knob right here on your right hand side of your reel. Now, if whatever reel you have, sometimes you actually will, if you have a certain kind of reel, you actually have to go into the side plate of the reel and there'll be like six breaks and you have to go two, three in, three out. So that's typically what I'll do. Um, if you have a reel like mine or you have my reel, you're gonna try to do this right here. That's, that's typically what I'll do. Now that I got that set up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crank up that tension knob a little bit. Now this is the first thing I'm gonna do when I first try to start to pitch and make my little cast and skip. 
Okay, so now you'll see every time I go down there, and the first thing I'm gonna do is tighten all the way up. And what I wanna do is get it to where if I drop it and I don't hit the dang button, or I don't, and I don't hold on to, the, on to the spool, I do not get a backlash, okay? So that's it right there. Now the problem is it's not gonna be free, so you're not gonna get the distance underneath the docks, but you're gonna be able to ultimately make that cast without getting a backlash at first and, and ruining your whole spool of fluorocarbon, and nobody wants to do that. So I'm gonna start with a pitch skip first, okay? Pitch skip is very simple. You have to be able to hold that bait, and what I'm doing is I'm actually, you'll see where I actually sort of like point my finger around the jig, and I don't try to, like, so the point of the hook is, is away from my finger. It's away from my finger. So when I go like this, it goes out of my hand. So I'm just really just trying to guide it, okay? So that's that little pitch. Let me see here if I can just go ahead and... Now, when you get better at it, first start and just try to get a little bit and you finger, you really feather your, the spool. You watch. So I'm feathering the spool as I go down through there, okay? I feather that spool. Let me do that again. Let me try to see, make sure you guys can get this. So I'm feathering the spool. That's exactly what you want to do right there. Now, as you get better, you can, you'll get better and better and better and better. That'll be, it'll get to the point where you can loosen it up. But right here, you're not gonna have to really worry as much about really crazy backlashing in real. You might have to do it, but or you might end up backlashing it, but it's not going to be crazy backlash. And I would recommend starting with monofilament just because you don't want to be spending a whole lot of money on a whole bunch of fluorocarbon and ultimately ruining all your fluorocarbon and spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars of, on, on, your, on your fluorocarbon just learning how to skip. I'll hold it like where I have one finger right there on the trigger, and then I'll go around and whoom, whoom. That's how I do it. Roll cast, okay? So I'll go one above the 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 the, 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 um, the trigger finger, the trigger. What's the name? One in front of the. Huh? I don't know. The finger trigger, man. The tri the rod trigger. I mean, you know what I'm saying, y'all. Y'all know what I'm saying. That's the thing. The thing deal you put your finger on, okay? One finger above that, okay? Some people do it like this. Some people do it like this. Some people do it like this. It's my pointer finger, okay? And then I'm going to make my rotation. So you just go around, and you're going to load that rod up. So you watch how I load my rod up right here. I'm going to try to show you guys. So you load your rod up. I'm going to try to do it over. Again, thumbing this. And how much you thumb it and don't let it thumb. It, it's feathering it is really the key. You're basically... And the key is, you see how I put my rod up? I let, it, I let all that line sort of go out. That's a lot of times what I'll do. So as you sort of get excess, a lot of times if I have like just a couple loops, I'll just go whoosh, right there. Now the key is too, and this is for all four carbon, always, always. If you have a loop down there, do not be lazy. Just go ahead, get that loop out, and start fishing, because you do not want to ruin your school. Ruin your spool of that four carbon, that's for sure. So, okay. So that's the key, start in open water, then you can start getting to these boat docks, okay? And we're gonna slide up here in this boat dock. This is a perfect slip that has no boat dock in it, or mo no dock, or no boat in it. There we go, let's talk a little bit, there we go. So that's another place to start. It's calm right here for the most part. There is a little bit of chop, just barely. And this is where I'm, so my plan is to try to get to that corner, to the left corner. Let's see if I can go. All right, wasn't a great skip. Let me do that again. All right, went back up underneath there. That is the deal. You have to get to where you're comfortable. And this is the thing, okay? So you guys see a lot of the videos, like obviously a lot of people were talking about the Travis video where I was skipping a lot of boat docks, what I was doing. It takes a lot of time to get that good at it consistently, but this is the thing too. I'm not that good every start of the season. It takes, it's all practice makes perfect. So as I make my pitches and I, be, and I make those skips, the more that tournament went on, the longer that tournament went on, the better I got. And that was really the key. Again, practice makes perfect, time on the water, that's all what it's about. If you look at, I talked to Brian Thrift, I feel like Brian Thrift, Andy Montgomery, those guys, in my opinion, were the first, like that I feel like were the best at what they did, skipping boat docks. And the reason behind that was, why was it? It was because they did it all the time on Lake Norman. 
and those guys were really good at being able to put their baits in places that not everybody else can. This is the thing, no matter how good electronics get, no matter what all goes on offshore, no matter how good you can read electronics, you're, there's still going to be a lot of fish that live shallow and live on boat docks. And there's going to be some people that master this and figure out how to get that bait where other people can't and they're going to have an advantage so this is something you definitely want to learn if you're a tournament bass fisherman or you're just trying to learn to become a better angler this is something you're going to want to learn the one thing is it's like getting in a groove now i've had you have off days you have bad you have really good days i'm sort of pitching there you have good days and bad days just like basketball and a rhythm as i pitch down through there i'll do these little pitch skips and that's what I'm, my, one of my favorite little things especially when they're really close. It's like those little small little pitches to me is a huge deal. Now, when you get to a pontoon, this is where it gets a little tricky. If you get real worried about it and you get to thinking about too much about this pontoon, what will happen is you'll hit it every time. So you almost have to sort of see your bait going in there and going back up underneath the pontoon. You sort of have to vision that go, making that happen. So as I go, all right, it went up underneath there. Some of the biggest bass in the pond live up underneath the boat on pontoon. Now, roll casting, that's going to be a different, you know, as, as I'll go back down through this stretch with a roll cast. And it's, it's all angles. As you see, I'm sort of like five to ten feet out away from, and it's sort of hard to tell on a, on a GoPro, but I'm five to ten feet out away, maybe, maybe 12, 12 to 15 feet away. I don't want to be too close, and I don't want to be too far away, because I don't want to make it too hard to make that little pitch, that pitch skip or that pitch cast um, around those places to where I can get that bait up underneath there and still get that distance. Cause you know, obviously if you, it's, it's harder to make those long casts and get way up underneath somewhere. So again, it's all about angles. And as you sort of get, it's, it's sort of like, all right, you have to figure out the trolling motor. You have to figure out how to ultimately be turning left and right in your positioning and you have to go ready. You see how I'm only, I'm like, straight ahead, I'm on this dock, but because of the angle of where I was at, I'm going to the next slip. Literally, I'll be sitting right here. I'll be standing like looking at this boat dock but I go to this, this particular cast because I roll cast in front of me, okay? So you got to get to the point. If I get to where I'm like right here, it makes it harder to make that skip because I'm, I'm, I'm bound up trying to make that cast. It's not natural. So when you get to where you're, you're really good at it, you can make that roll cast. You get to where your angle is right. You can't even see the back of the slip. That's a huge deal. You don't even can't even visually see it. Right here, I'm too far forward. Now I'm sitting here and my angle I'm trying, I can't even get the distance out of it. So that's another big deal. When you roll cast, you're almost, it's tough because you, you have to sort of know what's going on. I mean, if you don't know, like, hey, there's a, there's a big chain there, you get, you get hung up a lot, obviously. But now, obviously, like, if I go over there, like, you know, that, that's a big deal for me anyway. That's a big deal for me is the exact angle. Again, I'm right here. I'm anticipating what's around the corner. I want to get closer to that boat dock, let it fall down pop it around, swim it out. And I would say, you know, suggest if you're, you know, if you're just trying to practice, just try to, you know, cast this bait around, get it around, you know, try to make as many casts in a day and you're gonna hit some stuff and you're gonna dang mess up some jigs, you're gonna break off some jigs, you're gonna do all that. But the more you do it, the better off you're going to get. It does not, listen, this, did, me being able to cast at all you know, and, and getting better at this all took time. It took time and I had, to, I had to learn, I had to make mistakes. You learn from your mistakes, that is the thing. When you make mistakes, when you do things, you get better from your mistakes. It's just like turn, bad tournaments or bad decisions, you realize that's not a good deal and you gotta change it up a little bit. Again, like I said, here's this slip, that slip, this is the angle I wanna do, and even then it was a little bit behind. So, trying to give you guys a good rundown on exactly how that goes. And then you go in through here, there we go again. So that's the deal. Seven foot is what I recommend for if you're a beginner in, in, in tournament basketball or in, in general, and you're trying to learn this technique. Seven foot, medium heavy action. You can start with something flatter. That's what I, I suggest. Um, a jig, maybe a half ounce jig or a half ounce chatterbait. Don't buy a jackhammer because you don't want to beat that sucker up. If you're going to buy a, you know, a vibrating jig, then throw something that's a little bit cheaper so you can get used to it. A half ounce gives you a little bit of weight to be able to make those casts. Like I said, Bandito Bug is perfect trailer to learn how to skip. And, or any soft plastic that is flat 
will do the job and get you where you make it where you can learn sort of how to make that perfect cast. So that's what I recommend. You know, and then as you go on, you can get to where you you know you're casting the vibrating jigs around, and you can do that. But this is something that I always try every year. Like this is the thing. I still will come out here before that Travis event. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Before the Travis event, I came out to Chickamauga, and I. I knew I wasn't really catching much, catch much around these docks. A lot of the fish were, were spawning. I just, but I wanted to get to where I was in tune with making those casts. And I got a little bit more dialed in. It was just practice. It was like going out and shooting. It was literally just going out and shooting, you know, basketballs and getting better about, you know, shooting free throws. That's exactly what it was to me. So that's what you have to do in tournament bass fishing just as, as much as anything else. You have to do something to get better at it. So anyway. That is my thoughts. All right, guys, that's it. That's the, it's, it's an in-depth look, a little bit of general idea of what boat docks and sort of breaking down a little bit of difference between the boat docks. Um, the other thing is, you know, the one thing I did not mention on some of these floating docks is, is the walkways. A lot of times the bass will spawn on the backsides of the walkways um, or even the, the stationary docks. A lot of times the bluegill will spawn on the backsides of the walkway. So always pay attention to that. Um, I wanted to make this a skipping video, but also something to teach you a few things along the way. We didn't dive into every little intricate detail of a boat dock. We might do that in a later video. Let me know if you guys want that one on the channel, but I wanted to talk to you guys about that because so many people asked for how to skip boat docks, what you do, what's your setup, why you do it. All I want is to give that information to you guys so you can get better. Um, this is something that I, I obviously love to do. I love to get out here, you know, and go fishing. Um, and I want to you know, teach. I want to give you guys that knowledge that I've learned over the years um, because a lot of people pass a lot of knowledge down to me and I know I would not be with where I'm at today without a lot of those people that took the time to teach me along the way and put their put myself um, under their wing. And so that's a huge deal. I want to take you all up underneath my wing. I'm going to teach you a few things along the way. Let me know if you have any questions from this video and if you learned anything from this video, give me a thumbs up up top. It helps our algorithm. It helps ultimately more people to watch this video and watch the channel and grow this thing. We appreciate you so much. We'll see you on the next one.